Hey everyone, today we're starting our series on Advent. I'll be reading from 1 Thessalonians 5. Don't treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what's good, reject every kind of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. May your spirit, soul, and body be kept whole and blameless at the advent, or coming, of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. So, as you heard there, it's just in that translation, uh, the word Advent that you hear thrown around this time of year is just a word that means coming. Uh, it's, so, it's uh, something we see in Scripture referring most often to the coming of Christ. Uh, here, it's talking about his second coming. But really, in this season, we're talking about all the ways that Christ comes to us. When Christ came in the past, uh, his birth, that we're looking forward to at Christmas, when he'll come again in the future to make all things new, and also the way that Christ comes in our lives each and every day in, in surprising ways. And so the four weeks leading up to Christmas are the time that traditionally a lot of people have focused on this idea of his coming. So we'll use traditional readings that go along with this season. This week there's a lot about the day of the Lord. Next week we'll get a lot about John the Baptist. And there's a lot that are from the, well, you know, John the Baptist is kind of a prophet preparing the way for Jesus. We'll also hear from Old Testament prophets. We'll even hear some of Jesus' prophetic words. And this idea of prophecy, you know, Paul even is talking about it here. It's, it's really not about predicting the future, you know, giving dates and times. It's, it's about describing God's ideal world, how to prepare for it, to know that it's coming, and to know what's going to happen if you're not prepared. As Paul says here, all prophecies aren't created equal, right? There are some that are true and good, that are from God. There are some that are need to be rejected. <laughs> They're probably coming from somewhere else. But all of them need to be tested. And what's true about these prophecies, I think, is also true about traditions, uh, things that we've been handed down from others, the way that others have done things before. That the, They all need to be tested to see if they're fruitful. Right? What kind of person is shaped by these sort of, of predictions or descriptions of God's world? Or does this tradition, right, something like Advent or lighting candles or even Christmas itself, do they draw us closer to God or are they actually a distraction? Now, those are questions we should always be asking, but we shouldn't throw either out out of hand right away. We can trust that God is going to make all things right in the end. We should trust that God is going to bring that peaceful end by peaceful means. Maybe that's a kind of clue of what sort of prophecies we should listen to. But the real question is, what kind of people are we going to be in the meantime? Advent teaches us to wait, not to rush ahead and, and claim what we want, when we want it, and the way we think God should do it, but to acknowledge that Christmas is coming, but life is not always a celebration. Right? The last couple of years have made that pretty clear. Sometimes it's going to take longer to get where we want to be than what we expect. So, how are we going to face that reality? Are we going to fight it or rush into it with fear and faithlessness? Or can we patiently wait with hope, peace, joy, and love?